Hello everyone and welcome to another Fusion 360 Live. Uh, my name is Brad Tallis. I'm from Autodesk. And today's topic, we're going to be talking about how to create wire baskets like this one here. Um, actually, this came in from a customer and uh, he was saying, you know, what's the best way to create wire baskets? So I've actually come up with three different ways. Um, and we're going to start from the very, very basic um, all the way to a little bit more advanced, making it more realistic. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, my sidekick, Angelo, is on vacation this week, so I'm doing this solo. Um, so, we'll see how that goes. If you have any questions, what I'm going to ask is that maybe you put like three question marks at the beginning of your question. Um, that way, if I have time, I'll scroll through the chat at the very end, and if there's any questions in there, I know a lot of people say, hey, how's it going, and all that kind of stuff. I'll, I'll try and scan for those questions. I also have a bunch of people online that uh, might be able to answer the question for me. So if you're one of those people, please feel free to jump in and answer um, any of the questions that come through. I'll owe you for that. So let's dive right in. Um, okay, so actually um, this what you see on the screen, this is a real world example. I, I actually have one here. <laughs> and so I use that to create this model. and. What I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to break this down into three different um, examples. The first one is where you're actually going to use the rendering environment and materials to simulate a wire mesh. So this is not the best solution for actually creating one of these, but if you're doing um, you know, rendering or something like that where you need to have a basket or something similar, I'll show you these methods. So. I'm going to just start out with a basic primitive. So um, I'm going to use the box primitive. And I'll just start here and let's just make this maybe like um, a 6x3 or something like that. So I'm going to type in a 6x3 and then hit enter. So it's doing the, uh, the length of 6, the width of 3, and I can do it like at the height of 3 also. So I'm just going to start with a basic primitive like so. Now I want it to be rounded on the corners, so I'm going to go ahead and fill it the corners. Let's just do maybe a half inch, That'll probably look good on here. So I'm just going to go ahead and select those corners. And then I'll do the same thing along the bottom. Um, now if you don't know that little trick that I just did, I'm just going to right click and drag straight up. And it's going to repeat the last command that I did. In fact, if I right mouse click, you'll see this little um, dialog right here and you'll see this little black line. This is what we call a gesture. And you'll notice that if I go straight up, it's gonna repeat the last command, which was the fillet command. So a cool little shortcut. So after I, you know, I've already done a fillet, and I'm just gonna right click and drag straight up, it puts me back into that fillet command. So hopefully you all know that neat little tip. Okay, so here's my basic shape. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit A for appearance. Okay, so under here you can see under the modify menu there's the appearance and the shortcut key is A. So we're just going to change the appearance. Now I want to go into, let's go into the um, metal into here. Oops. And then I'm going to go into the brass. Now you'll notice in here there's a bunch of different materials like brass knurled. And so if I drag that on there, you're gonna see it sort of simulates this knurled texture or you know polished brass, etc. Well, if I keep scrolling down, you're gonna see there's like um, brass mesh, holes, wire, etc. Okay? So for example, if I go to um, this hexagonal mesh and drag it on there, you're gonna see that it looks like this hexagonal mesh and you can see through it. You can see these edges kind of behind. Okay, so this is the little trick that we're going to use. In fact, I'm going to go to um, this wire small and I'm going to drag that on there and you'll notice that we get this little wire type mesh. Okay, now obviously a um, little too small so I'm going to go back into my appearance here and I'm just going to get rid of the ones that I don't need. So that's, I don't need that guy. 
So I'm going to edit this mesh. And you can see right here is a scale. And if I start to click up, you can see that we can scale this. I'm going to go until it looks pretty good. Let's just go maybe like up to, let's just do 90. OK. Now you're probably going, eh, this looks kind of weird. We're going to get to this. OK. And again, like I said, this is a representation. We're going to get to actual modeling wires here in just a moment. OK, so I now have this. And you can notice it almost looks like it's a woven mesh. And we're going to come back to that here in just a second. But you'll also notice that it's going across the top. And that is not what I want. So here's another neat little trick. Right here in the search window, I'm going to search for air. And it'll go through and search all of the materials. And it found air. You can kind of think of air as an empty or blank material. And instead of assigning it to the whole body, I'm going to assign it to a face. So I'm going to drag that to that top face. And you'll see that we no longer you know, see that mesh across the top. OK. So let's just do a quick render so you can kind of see what this looks like by using this particular material. OK, so now I'm in my render workspace. I'll just hit quick render. And you're going to see that it's going to look like a basket. Now, it doesn't look great. We're going to fix that here in just a moment. But notice that you can see through the material. And that's kind of the key thing. This is a real fast way of generating a complex design. And I'll show you some examples of this here in just a moment. OK, now we notice a couple weird things. We notice all these little things sticking up at the top. We've got some weirdness going on in the corners and all that kind of stuff. So we can fix that by using this texture map controls. I'll go ahead and click on the box here. And you'll notice that it's set to automatic. Well, I'm going to change it to box because that's kind of what we're creating, right? So I'm going to switch it to box. And you'll notice instantly it looks better. And what it's basically doing is it's, it's allowing us to edit in kind of a box type format. So I can edit that face there. I could bring this face over here. And so you can kind of see I can tweak with, you know, if I have a weird corner right here, I could, you know, bring this over a little bit until that looks nicer. I could bring this over a little bit until that looks good, something like that. Same thing with the top. Originally, we had these you know, little sticks that were sticking up. So I'm going to drag this up until we're kind of across the top like so. And then you'll notice when I render this, we're going to get a nicer result. It's going to look more realistic. And it's going to look like an actual basket, for example. OK? And th in this case, it's a woven basket. OK, so I'm not going to let it render too long. You get the idea. Just by using the texture map, I was able to kind of fix what this looks like. And a prime example of this is, I mean, if, for example, let's say you're designing you know, shelving or something like that, and you want to have a bunch of these objects in here, a bunch of these um, baskets, you can literally start with a cube, or you know, in this case, kind of a rectangular cube. So we can you know, copy the number of baskets that we need, something like so. Let's just do maybe two in, the, in that direction. Um, and then when I go to render this, so imagine those being in shelves and all that kind of stuff. We go to render. It's going to look you know, like actual baskets really quickly. So a very, very fast way of doing that. And that's why I wanted to show this particular process. OK. Now, you might say, well, that's cool. Um, how else could you use this? So I'm going to stop here and show you, for example, this is a microphone that I did a long time ago. In fact, I'm actually talking to you through this microphone. Um, so that's what, what you're actually hearing me through. So let me uh, change this real quick. If you look at the mesh, you'll notice you know, the, this mesh right here. I didn't model that. That's actually using that basket material that I just showed you, um, in, you know, in a smaller scale. And I also changed it to be more metallic. And so it actually looks like you know, the wire mesh that's inside the microphone. It's literally just a solid. There's, there's, 
nothing in there, okay? Here's another example. This is from one of my customers. So the Colorado Department of Transportation, they use Fusion 360, and this is what they call a tool crib. They have these in some of their shops, um, and they make them themselves. They save a ton of money making it themselves, and they wanted to show what it was going to look like realistically. And if I zoom up, you'll notice there's this, this diamond plate mesh or whatever you want to call it. And all it is, it's just a, it's a solid. Um, you can see it right here. It's just a solid body. In fact, if I were to, you know, remove that material from there, um, let me just add, let me just add this guy. It's just a solid plate. There's nothing. They just modeled a solid plate. Then they just dragged that material onto it. And then when they, you know, want to show, you know, some of the other shops or whatever what they're what they're making, they can actually put this. I mean, check this out. This is actually kind of cool. Let me go into here. Let's do an environment. You know, they can actually put it in a shop and show what it would look like, you know, in the corner of the shop or something like that. Um, and then when they render that, it's going to look through it and they'll actually see through and see the background through that mesh. And then again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time rendering this, but you kind of get the idea. Instead of physically modeling all of those little diamonds, that would have taken forever. They're just using a, a rendered material. So cool little trick, okay? So that's the first example. Uh, the next example I want to do is this parametric basket. And here we're actually going to physically start creating some wires and um, we might want to change the underlying design and have it update. So that's what we're going to show next. Okay, so I'm going to start kind of the exact same way. I'm going to start with that box primitive. Okay, you can kind of think of this as like almost like an, an envelope of our design. So let's do um, in this case, let's make it like eight inches um, by four inches um, by four, I think. So this is kind of the, the, the starting shape I want to start with. I also want to have it like tapered or angled. So I'm going to add some draft. So I'm going to come into the draft. It's asking for the pole direction. So what I think of this is like, um, what are the edges that are going to get hinged? So I'm going to click on that face there. Now it's asking for the faces. And if I click on this face here, you can kind of see it's going to hinge on that face that I clicked on originally. So it's kind of a cool, cool little trick. I'm going to go ahead and select those four other edges, or faces I should say. And let's just do maybe like an eight degrees of draft. So I'm kind of defining the shape of my basket. I'll also go ahead and add some fillets on the corners. I'll make these fillets a little bit bigger than the last one. I'll right click and drag straight up to repeat that last command. And let's just make this guy, I don't know, like 3 eighths or something like that. Um, so 0.375. So there's kind of my basic shape um, of my basket. In fact, I'm gonna expand this guy open and I'm just gonna call that starting 13 shape okay okay now I want to keep things symmetric and if I turn on my origin you'll notice my origins kind of over here in the corner and now that I've added draft and all that kind of stuff these planes aren't gonna help me very much so I'm going to create a mid plane under the construct menu I'm gonna do mid plane I'll click that face there and that face there. And you can see that it put a construction plane right through the middle. I've shown this before, but if, if you haven't seen it, you can actually change the size of your construction plane just by getting near the corner. You can grab these corners and make it any size you want. So just another tip if you didn't know that one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sketch on this plane. So I just select it, right mouse click and say create sketch. And this piece of paper is slicing right through the middle of this starting shape. Now I want to grab the shape of this and you've seen me use the project command quite often. 
Well, there's another command inside the project menu called intersect. And this is actually really cool because what it allows you to do is I'm going to just click on the body and notice like I'm, I'm way over here. You can kind of see the preview. It's going to create a sketch of where the body's intersecting this piece of paper. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that body. I'll say OK. And if we turn that off, you can see it basically took an intersection of it all the way around. Now I don't need this top line, so I'm going to click on it and say delete. And now you can kind of see what we're doing here. We have this path that we're going to use to create some of our wires. And it's going to follow this shape. Okay. Okay, so I'm done with my sketch. We're going to use a cool command called the pipe command. So I could draw a profile, you know, I'd have to put a plane on a path, I could draw a circle, I could sweep that along there. But this pipe command, it's asking for a path. All I have to do is get near that path, and you can see it's selecting the whole thing. And then it's asking for the distance, and that's a ratio from zero to one. So we want it to go the whole distance. It's a circular section. You can see you can do different shapes. And then it's asking the section size is basically the diameter. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to do 0.125. We could make it hollow if we wanted it to be hollow. In this case, obviously, it's not. And instead of cutting, I want to make this a new body. So I'm going to say new body. We'll say OK. And now you can see we have a piece of wire that basically follows our starting shape. Okay, now let's go ahead and pattern this guy. So I'm going to do a rectangular pattern. What's the body? That's that one there. What's the direction? I'm just going to tell it to go, you know, left and right. And you can see as I start to drag, it kind of gives me a preview. Well, I want it to go in both directions. So I'm going to come in here and say symmetric. And now you can see that it's going to go in both directions. And that's why we did that mid-plane to start out with. I can go ahead and increase the quantity. Okay, you can kind of see how that's starting to increase the quantity. And then it's also asking for the extent. Well, I'm going to say, let's go to this point right here. You can see it's going to kind of snap to that point. And as I increase the number, they're going to that corner basically. So let's do nine because if I did eight we'd have you know one less on one side. So I'm gonna go to nine and say okay. And now you can see we have a bunch of wires that follow the particular shape. I also want to do a wire that goes around the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and say pipe. I'll click that top edge there, and let's make this a little bit larger in diameter. Um, let's just make this a 0.2, and again, I'm going to say new body, okay? And if I turn off my starting shape, we're starting to see how we're kind of building this in. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is, it's kind of hard to see this end piece, it just kind of hangs down right here. Okay, and it doesn't really follow the body. So that's what we're going to do next. We're still going to use the, um, the underlying starting shape to do this. Um, in fact, just to clean things up, I'm going to go ahead and combine all of these wires together. So let's just make that our target. What's the tool bodies? I'm just going to draw a selection box that crosses over them. We're going to join those together. Watch what happens over here. When I say OK, they're all joined into one body now. OK, Okay. so now let's work on the ends. So I'm going to create a sketch on this angled side face. I'm going to say Create Sketch. OK, uh, actually, let me turn that guy off, sorry. <laughs> and then I'm going to project this angled face. I want to grab some information from there. 
Now I'm gonna kind of mock up what I want that wire to look like. So I'm gonna just start to draw a basic shape, something like this. I'm gonna purposely make it look kind of weird just so you kind of see what's going on. So I'm just gonna draw something like so. And then I want to fillet these corners. So I'm gonna come into the fillet command. I'll click on that corner. And according to my measurements, it's 0.7. For the fillets okay then I'm going to put these points where they need to be now some of you might be going yelling through the screen well hey you projected that face already why are you creating this extra geometry well the pipe command is going to follow this path and I want to be able to um, give me just a second here I want to be able to um, have these fillets here, but because this is projected geometry, it won't let me fillet that referenced projected geometry. So we're basically using the projected geometry to help us out. Okay, and this will make more sense once you see what's going on here. So I want to put this corner up here. So I'm going to use the coincident constraint. So I'm going to say that point is coincident with that point. Okay. Then I might come in here and say this point is coincident with that point. And now you can see, let me drag this around a little bit. You can kind of see what's going on. If I, if I move some of these points, you can see how it's keeping those tangent. It's keeping those coincident. And I want to have this line always follow that line. So I'm going to say collinear. I don't use this constraint all that often but it's useful in this example. So I'm gonna say collinear, and I want that line to stay collinear with that line. You can see how it brought it over. I want that line to stay collinear, so in line with this. Now, why am I doing this? Well, when we go to change our parameters, I want this wire to grow with it. And again, you'll see this here in just a second. I'll say collinear with that guy there. We can see that the lines um, changed color, which means they're constrained. And I'll go ahead and finish my sketch. I know that seemed like a couple steps, but basically what we did there with a lot of me talking <laughs> is we created a sketch on this side face, this angled face. We grabbed information from that face, and then we drew a quick sketch that's using the information from this starting shape. And this will, again, make more sense here in just a moment. So now I have a sketch that I can create a pipe on. Okay. Now let me show you what I was talking about earlier. If I had only clicked on my projected geometry, you'll notice I get these tight corners and I can't fillet those corners. But by kind of tracing over it, I now get a shape that looks like this. And I get just the edges that I want. We'll make those the correct size. I'll make these a new body. I'll say OK. Let's turn on our other body there. And we can see that that wire is now at the same angle as the, the angle of our starting shape. OK and we used information from that. So this is awesome, okay. So let's go ahead and instead of recreating that, let's mirror this. So I'm gonna say mirror. I don't wanna mirror faces, I wanna mirror bodies. I'll click on that angled body. And then what's our mirror plane? Well, if I click on mirror plane, you'll notice nothing shows up except for my origin. Well, that's because if I expand open my construction folder, that plane is turned off. So if I turn that on, it's still there. So I can go ahead and click on it. I'll say OK. I'll turn that guy back off so it's not in our way. And then just like before, I'll combine these wires all into one. Okay. In fact, I could even rename this. Let's call it basket. Okay. The, the next thing I want to do is create these little loopy things. So again, I'm going to use a sketch to do that. 
I'll turn on my starting shape. I'll go to the back of the model here and create a sketch. So once again, I'm using the starting shape um, to, to help me create these wires. Okay, let's go ahead and just draw some geometry here. I want that to be one inch in diameter. I'm just gonna draw a quick um, rectangle here. I might actually catch, yeah, so I'm gonna, you'll notice I'm gonna catch kind of to the center of this pipe right here. So I'm just gonna come down like so. I'm just kind of mocking things up right now. I know I want that edge to be touching that circle. I want that edge to be touching that circle. So now they're coincident with each other. In fact, I could even come in here and let's trim those guys away. Let's create a curved fillet right here, 0.2. Again, just kind of using some dimensions I, I captured from modeling this earlier. Okay. And then I want to um, position where this needs to be. So now I'll just throw some dimensions on here. So I know from here to the edge of this pipe right here, that's gonna be two and a half inches. So I'm gonna type in 2.5 and you can see how it slid over and now it's more centered in between these guys. And then I know the height from here to here is um, supposed to be one inch, okay? Now you'll notice some of my geometry turned black. Some of it is still unconstrained. And if I grab on it, I can kind of see what's going on there. Okay, that's kind of weird. So I want to define the width of this rectangle to be 0.4. But again, notice what my sketch did. It's kind of weird, right? So how would I fix this? Well, another cool trick I want the center of this line, this horizontal line down here, to be perfectly in line with that guy. So I'm actually going to draw a line from the center of that line to that point right there. Okay. I don't want it to be an object line, so I'm going to change it to a construction line. And then I'm going to hit horizontal vertical. And it forces that line to become vertical. And because it's caught to the center of this line down here, it lines that up with that. It's a really kind of a quick way to bring things into symmetry if you want to think of it that way. And now we can see that it's fully constrained. So I'm happy with that. I'll finish my sketch. We'll create a pipe. What's the path? I'll go ahead and click on this. Now you'll notice that it's actually going horizontal. That's fine in this case. I could turn off chain selection and that'll actually let me click one segment at a time. So I could, you know, continue adding these segments like so and then not have it go across. So that's one way to do that. I also don't want to cut. I want to join. But be careful with this because notice it might actually join with the starting shape. So I'm going to turn off starting shape. So the only thing it can join to is the basket because that's the only thing that's displayed right now. And um, I'm not sure. I think it, this is going to be a larger diameter. It's 0.2 in this case. So you can kind of see how that thickens up. And if I say OK, that is all part of the basket. So I just created this little loop. Now they kind of weld this thing on, so I'm going to simulate that. I'm just going to create a quick fillet on these edges of, um, let's just do 0.1, and you can kind of see how it's going to create this nice looking fillet onto this top edge right here. And I'll say OK. And I now have one of these hanging loops on our basket. Well, again, instead of creating it over again, we'll use the mirror command. So I'll come in here and say mirror. Now, instead of bodies, because this is all one body now, I'm going to change this to features. I love mirroring features. 
And I want to mirror the pipe feature and the fillet feature. So you can see I can actually select both of those from my timeline and it's doing the pipe and the fillets at the same time. What's my mirror plane? I'll just turn that guy back on real quick and I'll say OK. And we now have the two hanging loops. So pretty quickly we were able to model something like this parametrically and this is where the fun part happens. Okay, so we've designed this basket. Now we want to make some changes to it. So let's go all the way back to the very beginning. So I'm going to edit this primitive here. And instead of four inches in width, let's make it three. And you're going to see that it's going to change in width. I'll say OK and check out what happened. It's now narrower in this direction. Okay, let's take it to the next level. We've changed the width, let's change the height. Let's make that maybe like eight, for example. I'll say okay, and now we have this wire basket that's taller. Maybe we don't want as much draft on it, so let's go to the draft feature, and instead of like eight degrees, let's just do maybe like one degree of draft. And there we go. So by spending a little bit of time to begin with, kind of creating this and making it parametric, we can now make a bunch of different shapes using these primitives. So let's just go back, to, let's go make, make it like three, for example, and say, okay, and we, now we have a little soap dish or something like that. And then just for fun, let's jump over into the uh, render workspace. We can kind of see what this thing is gonna look like. We could add a material to it if we wanted to. Um, you know, so if I come in here and say A for appearance, you know, we could make it, um, let's do old brass just for fun, um, drag that on there and it's going to look like, you know, old textured brass, for example, it's pitted or whatever. Okay. Hopefully you found that example kind of cool. Um, you know, we actually created wires. Uh, we made it so we can parametrically change it. And the next thing we're going to do is like, how would you manufacture this? So I'm going to kind of, hopefully we can see this on the screen. So you can see these wires are actually inside this bigger wire. So obviously they welded or whatever, um, the smaller wires to this bigger wire. And we didn't do that in this example. I basically made the wires kind of go into the bigger piece. Okay, so this next example, we're gonna do this again similarly, but we're gonna spend a little bit more time making sure that this thing's manufacturable. And this third example, I'm actually gonna use the form command. So this create form. Kind of, we're gonna do sort of similar, but you're gonna see the power behind this. So I'm gonna start with, again, <laughs> a primitive. Now this is our T-spline environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a form. This time it does let me um, pick a center rectangle, which is actually pretty cool. So I want, um, let's do the, the length of this. Let's just make it eight. Um, the width, let's make it a little bit wider. Let's make it five. Uh, and then, um, oops, darn it, I did, I did that too fast. Let me do that again, sorry. We'll go here. We do this. So I'm going to say length is eight. Let's do the width of five. Okay. And then the height, I think I'm going to make five also. And you can see it looks kind of pillowy. <laughs> I don't know if there's a better term for that. I'm going to be using these lines to help me with my design. So I'm actually going to add more of these lines by grabbing this little slider. You can see there's a plus and a minus, so I'm just kind of dragging left or right, and it allows me to add more detail. So in this example, I'm gonna do um, probably like, maybe like seven lines in this direction, and I want more in this direction, so I'm gonna kind of rotate and grab this guy, and let's just do, um, you know, you can see, you could add multiple ones in here, but let's just do maybe uh, three, just to kind of keep things a little simple here. And then same thing for the height. 
Uh, I'm going to grab this slider here and I can add, let's just do maybe six in this case. So you can kind of see it's starting to look more like a square box, <laughs> but it's giving me a lot of lines that we're going to use. I also want to make sure that this is symmetric. So I'm going to come in here and set my symmetry to mirror. I'm going to turn on my length and my width. Now, I don't know if this is 100% necessary, but it does help speed things up. I'll go ahead and say OK. And I now have this weird looking sliced piece of loaf of bread, basically. <laughs> OK. I'm going to do the exact same thing where I want to angle the faces. So I'm going to look at the top draw a box and it selects all of those faces. Now you'll notice because I have my mirror symmetry turned on it selected all those faces over there also. Then I'm going to edit the form. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about T-splines and form uh, editing like that. This is you know used a lot for like doing surfacing type stuff, organic shapes like hair dryers and stuff like that. Um, but we're going to use this to help us out. Now I want to rotate these faces, so I'm going to click on this Transform Rotate. I'm just going to start to drag, and you can see that it's going to rotate all of those faces. And let's just do, oh, probably again, let's just do maybe like 8 degrees of draft. I'll say OK. And then I'll do the same thing over here. Let's draw a selection box around those guys. I'll edit the form, and let's just rotate those about eight degrees. And now I've kind of got this tapered block. Now I don't need the top, so let's look at it from the front. I'm just going to draw a box around the top faces, like so, and then hit the delete key on my keyboard. And notice what it did. It, it kind of opened it up, and now it's starting to look a little bit more like a basket, right? Well, what's neat about this is it's giving us a lot of lines and points and stuff to catch to. Okay, so if I expand this guy open, I can see the name. Now what I'm going to do is I want to have some wires run like on the inside of these wires here and then I want maybe um, these wires here running on the outside. And this again will make more sense as we move forward. But I'm going to rename this body. I'm just going to call it mid for now. And then we're going to use a command under modify called thicken. Okay. Now what this does, it's asking for the T-spline body. I'm going to click on it and then I can type in a distance. So let's just do maybe like 0.1 because the, the diameter of my wire is going to be 0.1. So I need to make sure I'm doing this exact. So I'm telling it go 0.1 and notice this says thicken type is sharp. I'm just going to go ahead and say OK and you can see what it did. It took that and it thickened it 0.1 in that direction and it created a sharp edge. Okay, so let me do that again. I'll say thicken, do the point one. Instead of sharp, I'm going to say soft. I'll say okay, and now you can kind of see it's like, like a soft plastic rolled over kind of edge. Okay, and then lastly, the one that we're going to use is no edge. And watch what this does. It actually creates a second body. So there's no faces in between these two. In fact, and that went to the outer, so I'm going to rename that guy outer. Okay. Then I'll do the same thing again. I'll come in here and say thicken this guy. We're going to go in the negative direction. No edge. I'll say OK. And now we have one called inner. Okay, so I basically have three little meshes. I've got the, the inner, the mid, and the outer. Okay. Okay, so let's focus just on the inner stuff. So I'm going to turn off mid and outer. So we're just looking at the inner body. 
in form there is a pipe command okay so I'm gonna go ahead and say pipe has gives us a lots of options now I'm gonna click on this edge and notice again it kinda of chains that whole edge so I'm gonna click on that and you get a really weird result <laughs> don't worry about that um, I'm gonna change the diameter so I want these to be remember we talked about our wires being 0.1 so I'm gonna type in 0.1 and it's gonna create a pipe on these two in fact I'll do both at the same time those two lines basically now you'll notice it says display mode box or smooth I'm gonna change it to smooth in fact let me zoom up here a little bit so you can see there's kind of box mode and then I'm gonna change it to smooth mode and notice that the the pipe is right on this edge okay and because we've offset 0.1 that's gonna help us out you'll see that here in just a second now the only bad thing is that these are open these are like surfaces so I'm gonna to go to my end types and it says end type is open I'm gonna change these to square and you'll see that it kinda of rounds them over and it's gonna make these into a solid body check this out when I say okay okay and I can turn let me turn that guy off here is that and wait I'm not, I'm not gonna do it yet but when I say finish form these are gonna turn into solid bodies because they're capped at both ends okay okay so we just did that with the inner profiles now we're gonna start creating some other wires so around the mid so I'm gonna turn off inner I'm gonna turn on mid and exact same process I'm gonna say pipe it's asking um, for the paths now I'm gonna go all the way to the top so I'm gonna grab all of these lines here and it doesn't matter you know where I click it's grabbing those whole loops okay I want to make sure it's set to point one which it is I'll say smooth display you'll see they turn smooth now in this case I don't have to worry about the end type because they're closed they're actually you know touching each other they're fully closed so I'm gonna go ahead and say okay and I just created all the wires going around that way now let's turn this off and take a look at what happened here because we did those offsets you can see how this wire is touching this wire here like we, they're being welded together and they're not intersecting each other they're not cutting through each other okay so then finally we'll do the the outer wires okay exact same process pipe what are the wires I'm gonna go ahead and select these um, tool paths or I should just say these paths <laughs> okay um, want to make sure it's point one display mode is smooth in this case I do want to make sure that the end types are squared off you can see how they nice that looks and you can already see how these are gonna be like right up against those other wires I'll say okay and we've just created all of the wires basically for this basket now check this out I'm gonna say finish form I'm done creating the this organic form I'm gonna say finish and it's gonna look kinda of weird it's gonna turn on all of my parts and all that kinda of stuff you're like whoa what happened here well let's expand open the bodies and you're gonna see a bunch of bodies and then you're gonna see some surfaces well these are those original you know the mid the outer the inner so let's go ahead and turn those guys off we don't need those but notice how these now look you know they don't have all those little tiny segments they're all basically one body actually they're a whole bunch of individual bodies I should say <laughs> and I could combine them together so let's just make maybe the top be the the target I'll just draw a selection window across all the rest of them and we're gonna join all those together I'll say okay and you'll see it'll go from a bunch of different bodies to one body 
and we can say basket. Okay, so this is a manufacturable um, basket. Now I could have done the same thing with with this guy here if I had spent more time, you know, offsetting and stuff like that. The drawback with this guy is that it's not parametric. I can't very easily go back and make changes. I could I could edit this form, but it's not going to be as easy. It it really won't be parametric. Whereas this process where we where we you know told it to be parametric, um, we didn't use free form or anything like that. This allows me to make changes, and so that's why I wanted to show you the three different methods uh, for creating these kind of baskets. And and again, just for fun. We'll jump into render. I'll add a quick material onto here. Um, let's do aluminum satin. And um, I like to do, so you can kind of see the shininess there. I like to go into my scene and add in one of these, um, for example, let's just do like plaza one of these HDRI images and it's going to reflect into these materials. So you, You'll see it takes longer to calculate, but it's going to create a much more realistic representation. So the, the sky from the plaza is reflecting kind of in the tops of the wires. And then you can kind of see, the. in fact, if I go here and say environment, you can actually see what's reflecting in the metal. So we got some dark stuff down here, some light stuff up, up, up above. Okay. So there we go hopefully um, this gives you guys some ideas I showed wire baskets but I also showed some other examples you know with like the microphone uh, with the tool crib or whatever using rendering materials um, but you could create vases that you know are made out of wire um, pretty much anything that you could um, use the pipe command either in you know regular modeling or in the uh, uh, form modeling gives you lots of flexibility. So I'm going to take a look at the chat real quick and see um, if there's any questions. Uh, hopefully they were getting answered. Let me scroll through here. Um, usually I have a sidekick. <laughs> um, so let's see, not very many questions. Okay, I see Blaze is on there. Hey Blaze. Um, Okay, so somebody asked, how do you physically make the basket? So that's what I showed. I think that was early on. Um, uh, somebody also asked, why not do a new body in this situation? Uh, so that's a great question. Probably when I was doing like this one here, um, you could create new bodies and then join them together or combine them together. Um, or you could just do the join command already in the command that you're in. Like when you're doing the... Uh, the sweep or an extrude, it gives you the ability to do like um, a join or cut or whatever. Okay. Um, let me see if there's any other questions. I appreciate the people f adding in the uh, question marks. That makes it easier. Okay, it looks like um, that was about it for questions. I'm gonna to have to go through at a slower pace. So I'm gonna thank everybody that was helping out with the questions today. We're all a big family, so I appreciate that. Um, hope to see you on a future live stream. And remember with Fusion 360, you can make anything. Thank you.